Hi. Now what we've got here is an example on working with completing the square. And we've also got a bit on the discriminant and sketching a graph. So what we've got here is 4x minus 5 minus x squared is equal to q minus all of x plus p all squared where p and q are integers. And we've got to, in part A, find the value of p and the value of q. And then in B, calculate the discriminant of 4x minus 5 minus x squared. And finally, in part C, we've got to sketch the curve with the equation y equals 4x minus 5 minus x squared, showing clearly the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. OK, well, how are we going to do part A? Well, they tell us that 4x minus 5 minus x squared can be written in this format. Now I must admit I don't like this equals being here. It's not an equation, it's an identity. So in my opinion it really should say that this is identical to this. So I'm going to put a treble line there. And that's what I'm going to put here. Okay. Now this is a typical example on completing the square. And I've got plenty of tutorials, by the way, on this on my website if you want any further work on it. But essentially, we've got a negative x squared here. And when you're dealing with these, what you tend to do is put the minus outside a bracket and put it in the order of descending powers. So it's going to be x squared. And then we've got here plus 4x, but I'm going to need to write minus 4x instead. So we get minus minus 4x, making it the plus. And then we've got minus 5 here, so I've got to change that to plus 5. All right. Now that we've got it in this format, we can then do what we normally do for completing the square, and that is set up a curve bracket with a squared on the outside put an x here and then we halve this coefficient of x. So in this example it's minus 4, halve that value and now it's minus 2. And if you were to square this out you'd get x squared, then you get twice the product of the, these two terms, so you'll get minus 2x minus another 2x which will give you the minus 4x. And then you'd have minus 2 all squared which would give you plus 4. Now we want that plus 5. So because we've got plus 4 already, then all I need to do is just simply add 1 to that. And it will bring me up to the 5. Now if I expand this bracket again now, remember this is minus 1 here. If I was to expand it, I'm going to have minus this bracket all squared and then minus the 1. And I'm going to write the minus 1 first of all, and then write minus x minus 2 all squared. So we can see that this is identical now to the format that we wanted to show. And in other words, this is identical to q minus x plus p all squared, where, because we've got to state the values of p, we're told that p and q are integers. So we can say that where q is the value minus 1 and p corresponds to minus 2. So p equals minus 2. All right, so that's how I would set out and do that particular part of the question. Now we've got part B, we've got to calculate the discriminant of 4x minus 5 minus x squared. And when you're working out the discriminant of a quadratic equation, remember that any quadratic equation has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b and c are constants and a is always a value that is never equal to 0. Well, we are given 4x then minus 5 minus x squared. And if I was to rearrange it into this particular format, then it's going to be minus x squared and then plus 4x and then 
minus 5 if I rearrange these terms. And now that we've got this, we can work out the value of the discriminant. And the discriminant, you should be familiar with this, it's part of the um, quadratic equation. When you want to solve a quadratic equation, something like this, remember x always equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the b squared minus 4ac is the part that's the discriminant. And so if we work it out for this one here, the b value, the coefficient of x, is going to be 4. So we've got 4 squared. And then we've got minus 4 times the a value. a is the coefficient of x squared, which in this example is minus 1. So you've got minus 1 there. And it's multiplied by c, which is the constant on the end. And in this example, it's minus 5. So you've got 16 here, and you've got minus 20. 16 minus 20, which in other words is minus 4. So that's our discriminant. Now, in part c, it asks us to sketch the curve with this equation y equals 4x minus 5 minus x squared. And we've got to show clearly the coordinates of any points where the curve crosses the coordinate axis. Now, to do this, it's really based on quite a lot of the work that we've already done in this question. So, let's see what we've done. First of all, We've got, say, a curve, a parabola. This is a quadratic equation. All quadratic equations give a parabolic shape. But it's a negative x squared. And we should be familiar with this, that that is a shape that goes like this, OK? An inverted U shape. And we can see that it's never going to cross the x-axis. Now I know that because the discriminant here, which tells us the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation, it tells us because it's negative that there's no roots. Remember, this would be the bit inside the square root when you're using the quadratic formula. And you can't square root a negative number. It will give you an error if you are using your calculator. So I know that this does not cross the x-axis. So the other thing is, when you complete the square, it also is a way of sketching the graph. Because if we look at this part of the equation, then if we were to look at the graph of f of x equals x squared, which you should be familiar with, is going to be a U-shape, something like this, going through the origin. OK, so I hope you can kind of imagine that. That's f of x equaling x squared. Now, if I did f of x minus 2, then I would be doing x minus 2 all squared. And that would cause the graph, this U-shape, to move to the right two places. So imagine now our U-shape two places like that, OK? Then if I put a minus on the outside, I've got minus f of x minus 2. And that would cause any graph to be reflecting the x-axis. So now we've got a parabola like this, OK? Inverted. And then I've got this minus 1. And this would cause my parabola to drop down one unit. So I've got a graph looking something like this. Coming up like that peaking there, and then dropping away. And where it peaks, this point here, happens to be two units across and one unit down. Now, we're not asked to actually put this point in here. I'm just going to mark it in, but we're not asked to put it in. That point is at 2 minus 1. We're asked to show, though, where it crosses the axis and it only crosses the y-axis and it's at that point and that point is the point where x is 0. So if you put x equals 0 into here you're going to find that this term is 0, this term is 0, you're just left with minus 5. So the coordinates of this point are going to be 0 minus 5. So there you go. That's how I would go about 
thinking about how to sketch the graph then of y equals 4x minus 5 minus x squared. I'll just write that in there for you. y equals 4x minus 5 minus x squared. Okay, so I hope it's given you an idea over this question in case it gave you any problems. All right?